Hello, I'm Dr. Ronnie George. I'm a glaucoma specialist at Shankar Netralia. I've been an ophthalmologist for 20 years and a glaucoma specialist for most of that time. And today I'll talk to you a little bit about what glaucoma is. So many of you, in fact, most of you would not have heard of glaucoma. And you'll ask me, why is that so? The reason, unfortunately, is that in India, 90% of glaucoma is undetected, which means that the 10% of people who know that they have glaucoma constitute just 1 million people in this country. We are a country of 1 billion people in which 1 million people know that they have disease. So it's not unusual that you don't know that there's such a disease exists. Why is this disease such a problem? The reason that this disease is such a problem is that most of the time it has no symptoms. And it is called the silent thief of sight because by the time you start having problems, you start bumping into objects when you walk or you realize that you don't have vision in one eye, there is nothing that we can do for it. And that is why it is important that you know that such a disease exists and such a disease can be easily treated and you need to have a checkup to find out if you have disease or not. So glaucoma is a group of diseases where the optic nerve, which is the nerve which connects the eye to the brain, is damaged. And it is usually damaged because the eye pressures are a little high for that eye and the nerve cannot tolerate those pressures. And what happens initially is that your peripheral vision, the side vision that we don't actually pay attention to, is restricted. And when this side vision is restricted, most of us don't realize because we focus on what's in front of us. But when the side vision is restricted, as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller, you land up looking through a tunnel. And when you look through a tunnel, if you've ever done kept a tunnel in front of your eye, you know that nothing around you is visible. And the tunnel vision is of course the last stage of disease. Before that happens, you start bumping into objects because you're walking and you don't know what is there on the road over here. And that is the reason why this is a dangerous disease. There are two types of glaucoma and the two types are primary and secondary. Primary basically means when there is no other cause for the disease and secondary means when there are other causes for the disease. I will talk a little bit about both of them. So in your primary glaucomas, you have what we call primary open angle glaucoma. The angle is essentially that you think of it as a drain. It's a drain in the eye from where the fluid flows out. So you have fluid being produced in the eye and you have fluid that leaves the eye. Don't confuse this fluid with tears. Tears are the outer surface of the eye. This is fluid which is circulating inside the eye. So in open angle glaucoma, there is a little resistance to the fluid leaving the eye and the eye pressure builds up slowly and this damages the nerve. In angle closure glaucoma, what happens is that there is a block. This drain is physically blocked and with that type of glaucoma, the pressure can suddenly go up and that can cause sudden acute damage in the eye. And it is the more blinding cause of glaucoma among these two. This again is unfortunate for this country because in India and China, angle closure glaucoma is a very significant problem. Even though I told you that the pressure goes up suddenly, very often there are no symptoms of that. So the second group of glaucomas are the secondary glaucomas. Now the secondary glaucomas happen because of something else in the eye. It can be because of an injury. Did you bump your eye somewhere? Did you have a punch to the face? Did you have a sports injury? Did a ball hit your eye? A shuttlecock hit your eye? All these things can damage the normal drain. And when that happens, your eye pressures can go up. The other, unfortunately, common cause in India is the use of a medication called a steroid. So if you have an itchy eye, sometimes you go to a pharmacist and you get a steroid drop and you use it. And you use it for a long period of time. If you are susceptible, this can push the eye pressures up and you can land up with a very, very bad glaucoma. And this can also happen if you're using a steroid skin ointment for a long time. So whenever you're using any steroid preparation, either as a skin ointment, an eye drop, a tablet that you're taking by your mouth or a nasal spray, Make sure that you tell your doctor that, uh, that you use it for only as long as the doctor asks you to use it and don't use it beyond that. And if you have to use it on a long term basis, please have an eye checkup because that can cause blindness. And this is unfortunately especially common in young children who very often get itchy eyes. Their parents want to treat them. They go and see somebody. They start a, a steroid drop which is given for a week or two weeks. And sometimes we have seen children where it's been continued for months or years and they come back to us sometimes practically blind. And that's really tragic because the problem that they have is a mild allergy and the treatment has resulted in the blindness. 
So these are the common types of glaucoma that you see in this country. And uh, when you ask me, how do I make sure I don't have the disease? Unfortunately, there is no sign or symptom which can tell you that you have the disease because 99% of glaucomas are asymptomatic. You have nothing. You are comfortable. You don't have a problem. Occasionally, very occasionally, if your pressure suddenly goes up to a very high level, you might have pain in the eye. And that is a relatively rare type of glaucoma. So most glaucomas you will detect only on a routine eye examination. You might tell me, I go for my glasses every year and I don't have a problem. But checking the glasses is just a small part of a routine eye examination. Your eye examination should include not only checking your glasses, it should include checking your eye pressures, looking at the front part of the eye, looking at the nerve at the back of the eye, and looking at the drain in the eye. All these things are important for us to detect whether there are any uh, defects in different parts of the eye. Without doing all these three, we cannot rule out glaucoma. So you might be very happy with your glasses, you can see very well, but you have actually not had a complete eye examination. So who all should have an eye examination? If you are above the age of 40, you should definitely have an eye examination. If you have ever had an injury, if you have been on medication like a steroid for a long time, if you have a family history of glaucoma, irrespective of your age, you should have an eye examination. Once you cross the age of 40, every year or two years, you should actually have a proper eye examination so that if you have a problem, it can be managed. So how do we treat glaucoma? And glaucoma is not difficult to treat. The most common treatment for glaucoma is an eye drop, which you may need to use once, twice or thrice a day or more frequently, depending on how severe the disease is. So very often just a one drop a day is all that is required to keep your disease under control. But don't forget that just like any other chronic disease, the disease can get more severe with time. Just because you have been started with one medication at one point in time doesn't mean that that is going to be enough for you for the rest of your life. You will require periodic checkups and during those periodic checkups, we will check your side vision to see how things are. We will check your pressure, we will check your nerve and then we will decide whether we need to modify medicines, whether you need to add medicines or whether we need to plan any other way of treating your disease. What are the other ways? If you have angle closure disease, we would advise you to have a laser first and then start the treatment because the laser helps to open the block. The other options you have are a laser, like a laser trabeculoplasty to reduce the pressure. If your pressures are uncontrolled and we are not able to control them with normal medications, then we could even think about doing surgery in your eye. And the surgery can be a conventional surgery called a trabeculectomy. We may have to put a tube in your eye or there are other options available for glaucoma surgery. So glaucoma is eminently treatable, but it requires a lot of input from both the patient side and the family side to make sure that drops are put properly and follow-ups are done regularly. Are there any simple tests for glaucoma is the other question that we get asked very often. Unfortunately, there are no very simple tests for glaucoma. You need to have a complete examination, which will take a little bit of time because you have to check your vision, we have to check the pressure, we have to look at the nerve, we have to look at the drain. Everything is not going to get over in five or 10 minutes, but it is worth it because it's an hour or two of your time and it could save you from blindness in the future. We have spoken a little bit about glaucoma and I'm sure there are some of you have questions about it and I'd be happy to answer some of them and see how, how best we could uh, clear some of these doubts that you have. There's glaucoma in my family. What does this mean for me? So if somebody in your family has glaucoma, that is a blood relative has glaucoma, then that means that in your, in your lifetime, your risk of glaucoma can be as much as three to seven times higher than in the normal population. So the normal risk of glaucoma is about 3%. That means your risk is closer to 15 to 20%. And that's quite high. So if anybody in your family has glaucoma, it is mandatory that you have an eye checkup to rule out that you have the disease at present. And you also continue to have the eye checkups periodically because this is a disease where the risk increases with age and we may actually detect it on subsequent exams. I was told to use my eye drops every day and to make sure that I did it at the same time each day. Why is that important? So just like any other medication, timing of medicines is important. The reason that you use a drop once a day or twice a day depends on how long the medicine acts. A drop which is used once a day lasts for 24 hours. A drop which is used twice a day lasts for 12 hours. So if you put the drop once at 8 p.m., the next day at 5 a.m., and the third day at 10 p.m., every day there are periods during the day when your eye pressure is inadequately controlled. And this fluctuation in the eye pressure is not good for your eye. So it's important that you use the medications at a fixed time, keep an alarm, use some sort of reminder to put it at the same time consistently. 
The other question that people ask me, oh, today I forgot to put the drop at 8 o'clock. What should I do about it? If you have forgotten to put the drop, put it again as soon as you remember. But the next day, go back and put it at the time that you put it normally. If glaucoma can't be cured, then why do I need treatment? So glaucoma cannot be cured just like diabetes or hypertension cannot be cured. That doesn't mean that we don't take diabetes or hypertension medications. The reason for treatment is to prevent further damage and to make sure that we can preserve your vision for your duration for the duration of your lifetime so that you can be active and do what you want for your entire life my doctor says i have lost more than 70 percent vision in my right eye and she sees early signs of glucopatose damage in my left eye how do i restore my vision loss so glaucoma is called the silent thief of sight because the vision that you have lost cannot be recovered unfortunate that you have 70 percent loss in one eye but look at the positive side. In the other eye, you have very early damage. And most of the time, with this sort of vision, you can manage to do most of your activities very comfortably throughout your lifetime, provided we can keep the disease under control over the next few years. So you should make sure that you do your medications regularly and do your follow-up regularly. And we should be able to manage your glaucoma for your lifetime. I have glaucoma in my left eye. Will I get glaucoma in my other eye as well? If you have glaucoma in one eye, there is a high risk of you developing glaucoma in the other eye too, except if your glaucoma is secondary to some sort of incident like an injury or some sort of surgical procedure in the eye with disease. So most of the time, glaucoma tends to be bilateral that is in, both, in both eyes, but the disease can be very asymmetric with one eye having much more severe disease than the other. The advantage of having disease only in one eye is that once you know you have a problem, the other eye is also monitored very closely and at any stage that we see the early signs of glaucoma, we would start treatment and therefore your risk of progressive disease in the better eye is very small. The World Glaucoma Week has been celebrated globally for the last decade or so with the main aim of increasing awareness about the disease. This silent blinding disease is responsible for most of the irreversible blindness in the world. And the only way we can tackle is if you become aware of the disease and you come for an eye checkup and you bring your parents or your grandparents for an eye checkup. Unless you rule out that you have the disease, you do not know that you actually do not have the disease. So take this opportunity and please, in the next few weeks or next few months, make sure that you and members in your family who are above the age of 40 years have an eye checkup and help us to prevent this preventable blindness and preserve your eye health in the future.